Hi, I'm Laurie Hedges, I'm one of the iFootage reps, and in this really concise film, I'm gonna explain why you may want to consider moving from the ultra lightweight Komodo K5 fluid head to its rather beefier cousin, the K7. So I've just gotten back from a filming trip in Costa Rica, where I was filming wildlife in the rainforest, as well as bears and bison up in the Rockies. Now, as an independent filmmaker, I spend a lot of time on the road, and I'm always having to pack my equipment into just one check-in bag. Hence why I have relied in the past a lot upon the excellent Komodo K5 fluid head. It's lightweight and it pairs very well with the Cobra Strike monopod and the Gazelle Uprise tripod. But there are a couple of hard truths in life. Number one, no matter how many times your friends and everyone around you swears, you will never get upgraded to first or business class. Trust me. And number two, shooting stable footage at long focal lengths with heavier equipment is nigh on impossible without the right kit. The K5 has suited me so well over the years, but I now shoot on a Sony FX3, which when paired with a cage, a monitor, a microphone, an XLR handle, and a 200 to 600 millimeter lens, is pushing up against four kilograms. Combine this with shooting at awkward angles or with heavy wind or at the focal lengths needed to safely film grizzly bears. Side note, that's around half a kilometer if you're wondering and trust me, do not push it. Then no matter how hard you try, some camera shake is going to creep into your shots with this fluid head. Don't get me wrong, it is possible to shoot with a four kilogram payload with the K5. But if I'm wanting to shoot wildlife and really ensure the smoothness of my shots, then I'm gonna need something bigger. Enter the K7, which is now my go-to fluid head for shooting wildlife for three big reasons. Number one, you can adjust the resistance in both the pan and the tilt dimensions. When you're shooting at long focal lengths, you're gonna to have to really crank this up. Tiny amounts of movement from your hand when shooting at 600 millimeters will translate into big movement at the other end of the image. So increasing the amount of resistance to your hand will smooth these out dramatically. Number two, you can very quickly adjust the dynamic balancing system of this fluid head to match the weight of your setup. When I'm pointing my lens directly upwards into a canopy, I want the whole setup to be as balanced as it is when panning directly across a flat landscape. Number three, it is heavy enough that wind is just not gonna affect this so much. That's not something that I thought about very much until recently when I was trying to film bison in a snowstorm. The whole rig was getting blown about and with a heavier setup, that just wouldn't have happened so much. Speaking of weight, the K7 comes in at 1.95 kilograms, which is more than double that of the K5 which is a mere 760 grams. As well as all of this, I love the fact that the pan and the tilt locks are big and easy to find and operate. The quick release plate drops directly in from the top and the handle is quickly and easily resizable depending on whether you're using it or packing it away. Also, this thing is built to last. It's an anodized surface, which means that it won't corrode, which is something that's happened to an unnamed other tripod head that I used to own. So there you are. To summarize, any time that I'm filming wildlife from now on, then the K7 is going to be my go-to fluid head. For anything involving just interviews, time lapses, or short focal lengths, then I will save some weight and stick with the K5. I hope you enjoyed the film and that this clears up which one of these fluid heads you may want to use for your projects.